Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Wednesday, January 13th, 2021 and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, January 14th. Futures are currently slightly higher Wednesday evening. Uh, we're looking at the major indices up roughly a quarter of 1%. Uh, we'll see how that translates into uh, Thursday open, but at least for now, it does look like the market wants to go a little bit higher. Um, before we get started, I'll go through today's agenda with you. Uh, we'll start off with that uh, daily market recap, jump into talking technically. Uh, I've got a new segment for you, trading alerts. Uh, I'm going to go through 10 stocks pretty rapidly, uh, stocks you might be interested in and possible trades. Then we'll get into scooter movers, talk about, uh, I don't know, maybe three or four stocks, a couple large cap, a couple mid cap. Uh, that I think are worth noting. Earnings Spotlight, got uh, some companies coming up for uh, earnings in the morning, and uh, we'll take a look and see what those charts look like. And then we'll wrap up the show with the three you must see. Before we get into any of that, I'll bring you over to earningsbeats.com, where uh, I'd love to have you sign up for our free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. Uh, just simply type in your name, email address, hit this subscribe button here, and uh, you can join a large group of traders that have become part of our community over the year, well, last couple of years, and uh, would really like to uh, have you join us if uh, if you'd like to get some information and you know maybe take a look at our approach to uh, the stock market, how we trade, um, how we uh, um, you know really go move through our candidates and try to find some of the best trading candidates out there. Uh, the newsletter is published three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, usually before the market opens. Uh, there's no credit card required. It is free, and you may unsubscribe at any time, uh, no problem. So uh, you might want to just check that out. Again, it is free, and I think it'll help you in your trading or investing. Uh, over here on the right-hand side, you can see our portfolios. Um, we do a lot of research at uh, Earnings Beat, so we have a research platform, ton of education, but also part of our services, we do these portfolios every three months. And uh, currently these portfolios are just absolutely on fire. You can see our current quarter on our four portfolios, swamping the S&P 500, and also our performance since inception in three of the four, uh, very, very strong and uh, distancing the S&P 500 by quite a, quite a ways also. But I uh, would love to have you join there if you want. We have a uh, no cost 30 day trial. You pay $7 up front, but we refund that $7 to you. And then you can enjoy our service for 30 days and see if you like it. All right, let's move on to the action on Wednesday. We saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average finish down eight points. S&P was up eight points and the NASDAQ was up 56 points. Mid caps and small caps though were the laggards on Wednesday uh, on a relative basis. Both underperformed. Mid caps were down almost 1%. Small caps a little bit better than mid caps, but also down pretty close to 1%. As far as sectors go, you can see utilities, best performing group up almost 2%. Real estate also uh, did well. So that's two defensive groups, not exactly uh, what we wanna see. We'd like to see the aggressive groups leading uh, any market advance. So definitely mixed action on Wednesday. Technology did have a pretty decent day up about two thirds of 1%. Still trying to make a breakout though. It had that high toward the end of December, hasn't been able to clear it since, uh, but still in an overall uptrend, which is bullish. Materials and industrials, these were the two groups that lagged on Wednesday. Materials have been very strong of late, but we were down about 1%. Industrials, which had just broken out above the November high that we had uh, here in the past few days, uh, we were down a little less than 1% on the industrials. Taking a look at the uh, treasury yield, 10-year treasury yield, big move lower. And I'm not surprised after the candle that printed on the yield back on Tuesday. So after going up here for five straight days, really big move to the upside, a black-filled candle. Now, if you're familiar with candlesticks, you know that those black-filled candles, especially off of an uptrend, can mark a fairly significant top, at least in the short term. Um, so the fact that we pulled back after that is not a surprise at all. We were down five basis points to 1.09% on the 10-year Treasury yield. And that you know, made it a little difficult for some of the um, aggressive groups of the market, especially the uh, financials, which had been on fire. 
but financials did uh, struggle on a relative basis on uh, Wednesday as a result of that yield falling. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to, actually, before we move on, I do wanna just uh, point out that uh, tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, um, we are expecting initial jobless claims out and uh, the outlook there is for 790,000. Last week was 787,000. So we're just kind of looking for a similar reading to what we saw last week. All right, moving on to talking technically. First thing I wanna do is just point out, point out the S&P 500 remains in this uptrend. We continue to trend above the 20 day moving average. That looks pretty good uh, to me. We do have options expiring on Friday. So when you get into option expiration Friday as you approach it, and then even the following week, we can run into some difficulty. So I'm still, you know, I'm still optimistic, very optimistic on the market going forward in 2021. But anytime we get to this point in the calendar month, as we start to, to get ready to flip to the second half of the month, that's when you have to start to at least be cognizant of the long-term historical nature of the market and how the market tends to operate. And once you get past the 18th of the month, which is next Monday, that's typically the bearish time of a calendar month. So we're, we're getting close to that. You can see the S&P 500 now for the last three or four days, really pausing here, struggling to go much higher. So maybe we do get that pullback. Um, if we do, I think it's gonna set up a nice opportunity as we head into February. But uh, anyway, that's the daily chart, which I still think looks pretty good. We are a little bit maybe toward the overbought area, but we can stay overbought for a period of time. We saw that back in August into early September. We saw it for a period here in early June. We also saw it all the way back here in January before the pandemic hit. So it's not unusual to stay, to have that RSI move above 70 and stay above 70 for, you know, a little bit of time. So uh, currently we're at 66 though. So we do still have a little bit of room there. Um, also, I wanted to look at the communication services area. Now this is a chart of communication services relative to the S&P 500 over the last two years. So this is a relative chart. Now, if you wanna just see what's going on with communication services on an absolute chart, it's down here. And you can see it's been trending higher, it's breaking out. Here, is, it's showing on a relative basis though. So this is relative to the S&P 500. And one thing you, you can note here is that just recently with the uh, move lower this week and this month, um, we've broken down now to about an eight month relative low on communication services. And this is something worth watching. The relative PPO hasn't gone negative yet, but unless we get a turn pretty quickly, that will probably be the next step. And that would be bearish to see that cross over there. So communication services, I think, still at a, a point in the chart, I still think it looks good. I think we're in a secular bull market where we normally see all sectors move higher but especially the aggressive groups. So I believe communication services is gonna turn back up. I don't know on a relative basis uh, how much it turns back up, but I do expect on an absolute basis, we're gonna turn higher again here. So uh, that, this is something I'll be watching, but I just wanted to point that out, the, uh, the weakness that we're seeing there. And I'll show you a couple of these others. Industrials, industrials had pulled back to this rising relative 20 week EMA and it's starting to turn back up. So we might just be starting to see some relative strength building again in industrials. That'll be something to watch the balance of this week and, and into next week. Financials, uh, this group has been on, absolutely on fire right, recently. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that the positive virus news came out. Um, that was, uh, you know, that sent the market up back at the beginning of November and financials have really benefited from that. All right, let me uh, look at two more here. I wanna show you consumer staples uh, because consumer staples, you can see on a relative basis have really fallen apart. And you can see going back the last two years, we're now at a two year relative low consumer staples versus the S&P 500. Now you might say, well, that's bad because we got a group of the market that's not performing well. Well, you've always got groups that aren't performing well relative to the S&P 500. If you look up or if you look down at the bottom of this chart, consumer staples has actually been breaking out the new highs. It's just that it's not going up as fast as the S&P 500. So the relative strength is moving lower. This actually is what you want to see in a secular bull market. You want defensive groups to lag the S&P and you want the aggressive groups to lead 
the S and P. So um, don't think bearishly when you see this. This is actually a, a pretty good uh, sign for the market. Real estate, same thing. You know, if you take a look, real estate is inching its way higher. It's actually been moving up, but on a relative basis, it's been a horrible performer relative to the S and P 500. So even though we saw a little bit of strength in the defensive groups earlier, uh, well, on the uh, session Wednesday, overall, these groups have been lagging. And that actually is very good for the secular bull market theory. All right, next segment. Um, this is a new segment uh, I thought I'd get into is uh, trading alerts. So I've got 10 stocks for you and I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly, but I just wanted to point out um, something you know technically on the chart that looks good or maybe some things to look for in terms of pullbacks. ACLS is a semiconductor and this has been a very strong group. ACLS though has just been sideways consolidating until Wednesday. That was a huge move up. Look at the volume pickup. Very, very nice candlestick breaking out of all this sideways consolidation. We could move back down to that 34 area, possibly even fill the gap to 32. But I'm, I'm thinking 30, 33, 95, 34 dollars is going to provide some pretty good support on this stock, I believe. So uh, watch the stock because this does look to me like a character change on the chart now where we're actually getting that breakout. AFMD, wanted to show you the cup here. So it got a nice beautiful move up. And if we scroll down here, you see this is in the pharma group. So AFMD relative to the pharmas was at a 52 week high when it set this high, pulled back and now it's starting to strengthen against its group again. But it has now formed this cup at about 750, the highs. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of a pullback, but I really like the right side of this cup, the volume picking up. Uh, I think this, this uh, chart looks really good. And look at the AD line. AD line breaking out. So this is one I think to keep in mind and watch closely. KERN, this is a Kerna Corp. Um, five, six days here, last five or six days, very strong, gone from about three and a half dollars to over seven today. The only thing I would say, and the volume has certainly supported this move to the upside. Anytime I see something like that where this downtrend's been broken, you get this big move, there's a lot of volatility. You can see some of these candles have very, very wide ranges trading ranges throughout the day. Don't be shocked if we get some selling at some point that takes us down to that 20 day moving average. Aggressive traders could look for it there. MBUU, this is Malibu Boats. This is a stock that had been sideways consolidating for a while, has been moving up the last few days. Good news is we broke out of the trading range. Bad news, shooting star. That is a reversing candle off of this uptrend. I think we'll pull back somewhere between 65 and 70. I think that would be an opportunity to get in if this is a stock that you're interested in. Next up is GameStop. This is the most heavily shorted stock in the market. We have a short squeeze chart list that we have for our members and GameStop is number one on it in terms of short um, percentage of float. And look at this short squeeze that took place on Wednesday. This is why we put these lists together for our members because when you get a breakout with heavy short interest, you can see a squeeze and the, the key or the confirming signal is the volume. That's when you know you've got a lot of shorts. When you get a big move up, stock was up 57%. There's nothing fundamental that would take the stock up 57%. This was simply the short-term inefficiency when everyone is trying to head for the exits at the same time in terms of uh, the shorts, all the short covering that took place. Stock opened up at 20 and change, got as high as 38.65. Pulled back, but still a very, very nice day for the longs. And uh, that huge volume um, was pretty uh, impressive as well. KOPN, this is Copen. Um, I actually like this pattern here. Nice move up. Look at the volume that came in in mid-December. And now I think it's just consolidating, awaiting a breakout above three and a quarter. Um, I think this one could really run. Volume picked up again on Wednesday. Stock was up 15%, but I do think it needs to clear this three and a quarter level. If you see a false breakout at three and a quarter, you might get one more test that 20 day. And that is where I, I really like the stock. It is a small company. It's an extremely aggressive play. So should only be for aggressive traders to consider really. ICLK, this is iClick. Um, really like this move here where we broke out above the prior high. 
Uh, look at the volume picking up. Look at the AD line taking off. This looks really good to me. Uh, Pull back at some point to test the 20 day moving average will likely happen. So it might require some patience here. I wouldn't chase it, but this is a stock that certainly is improving. I love the volume here that's been picking up on this move higher. Uh, BGFV, this is uh, big five sporting goods. This I believe is also on our uh, short squeeze list, but that is an ugly candle. That bearish engulfing candle, I think in the short term is going to create some problems here for the stock. I think the 20 day moving average is where I'd look first. We closed at 1162, the 20 days 1101. So you got about maybe five, five and a half percent to get down to that area. Um, whether or not we hold the 20, I think that's gonna be really important. If we don't, look at this prior low down here around $10, rising 50 day moving average coming up from underneath. If we don't hold 11, that 20 day moving average, I think we could move down to 10. But that reversing candle, you can see the volume picked up on that reversing candle closing at the low, just seems like it's got some more selling to do. Intraday tomorrow, we might see a little bit of movement to the upside, but I think by the end of the day, we're probably gonna see it lower. Uh, FireEye, F-E-Y-E. This uh, looks like a great bull flag to me. Huge move up, tremendous volume. And now it's simply going sideways here. Anything back down to that 21, 21 and a half area would be very interesting on the downside near that 20 day moving average right into this gap support area. I think 21 would be very, very um, interesting for an entry point. Ultimately though, what you wanna see is a close back up above about 24 and a quarter. Last one I have for you is FTNT. Whoops, this is Fontnet. If I can get it here, uh, our score, excuse me, Fortinet, uh, FTNT. But look at the, all the tops here coming across between 150 and 155. That's right where we put in this bearish engulfing candle, another reversing candle. Accumulation distribution is very strong. I don't think this is gonna stay down long, but we could get a 20 day test. Maybe a stretch would be down to test this 137, 138 level where we were about a week ago. But I think the 20 day could hold and a breakout above 155 would be very bullish here on FTNT. All right, moving on, scooter movers. Uh, so for scooter movers, what I did, and um, actually, let me show you how you can get to this. So from your dashboard over here under member tools, if you scroll down, um, summary pages, under summary pages, you'll see scooter reports, click on that. Now there's a number of ways you can look at scooters. First, you can just look in order, which is the default. So you can see what the best stocks are. Um, I can tell you that these first three are all in our portfolios. Um, they've been helping to lead our portfolios. All three of these stocks have been awesome. But I thought what I would do here is pull this up in terms of change in the scooter. Now this gives you the intraday change. What I was gonna do is maybe pull up a one week and see what uh, has been going on. So Twitter has had the biggest drop among large cap stocks, biggest drop in the scooter over the last week, dropping 38.6, it's now at 40.1. So that means it was at 78.7. Uh, so that's a pretty big drop. Uh, the two that I wanted to point out though, one is Western Digital, because I think this one could be setting up for a nice uh, opportunity. So yes, it's pulled back in its scooter because it's had a little bit of a rough week, went from 55 down to 49 and change, but I think it's got great support here. Uh, let me give you the number there. I think the, the support is down around 48.29 and today's low was 48.62. So that's getting pretty close to that prior low when you know you've got recent price target up near 55 or recent price high around 55 or a little above. That's telling me you got maybe 11, 12% to the upside from the current level. And if we move back a little bit more, you'd have even more uh, profit potential back to the upside. I, I think that uh, Western Digital will hold this prior low. I mean, the 50 day is just beneath there. So maybe you give it to the 50 day, but this weakness I think is presenting an opportunity here on Western Digital. The other one that I wanted to point out was uh, Las Vegas Sands. So let's pull this one up. This is a gambling stock. And the thing I liked here was if we annotate this, you can see on the support line right at about $55. Since we gapped up on this heavy volume with the, that was when the vaccine news came out from Pfizer, gapped up to $60, every pullback down to $55 has been viable. Here 55 went right back up to 60. Here it came down to 55, back up to about 59 or so. 
Here we came down close to 55, right back up to 60. Here we came back down close to 55, right back up to 60. And now we're back down here again. And that tail actually was below all of these prior lows and the volume was heavy. So I think that may have triggered some stops and market makers could be accumulating some shares here. Uh, this one has got a decent shot, I believe, to make another run for 60 and maybe make the breakout this time to the upside. So I, I, this was one that I just wanted to point out as far as scooter mover. It's moving lower, but it could be setting up a nice opportunity for us. Um, then I went to the mid caps. And so all you have to do is go down to this drop down, move to the mid caps, still got one week, negative change here. The two that I saw on the list here, one was Nuvasiv, N-U-V-A, so I pulled that one up. This has actually broken the downtrend. Let me get rid of that inspector there. So you can see this downtrend line. Just recently, look at the volume pickup in mid-December as we come up and we break that downtrend line. Now we're trending above that 20-day moving average. We were just up to about 61. Now we're back down to 56, getting close to that 20-day. I think the reward to risk looks pretty good at that 20-day moving average, something to think about. The other one that I wanted you to take a look at or wanted to point out was Tegna, T-E-G, or excuse me, T-G-N-A is the ticker. So this is in communication services. Remember I was talking about this is an area of the market that could see a movement back to the upside. Publishing's been getting hit a little bit. This stock's been getting hit. And if you look at the stock, it made a breakout here on increasing volume at the beginning of the month above these prior highs around 1480, 1490. Well, we pulled back and we actually went down to 1482 today. We were up over 16 just four or five days ago. So nice little pullback, a test of the 20 day and gap support. Let me get you that number on the gap support. So I like it here on the top of gap support. I don't know if it'll go back below. 1452 is where we opened that day. The 20 day right now is 1454. So a little bit more weakness here down to that level, I think could present a decent reward to risk trading opportunity. And the last one I wanted to show you for scooter movers, or actually that was the last one. I thought I had a fifth one. That, that was the, the fourth and last. So we will move on. Let's uh, move on to earnings spotlight. And I wanna take a look at some of these companies that will be reporting earnings on Thursday morning. So these are some, as you're listening to this, you may be able to check out the prices, see what's going on. Um, first one is Taiwan Semiconductor. Semiconductors have been extremely strong. You can see the group going up and you can see Taiwan relative to the group has been going up. If there's one negative, it's the AD line, which has been coming down. To me, price action and relative strength trump the AD line. So if I see strong stock, strong relative strength, I don't pay as much attention. A strong AD line would confirm everything else, but a weak AD line doesn't necessarily mean I wouldn't buy the stock. It means I might be a little bit more careful, might be a little bit more patient, make sure I keep my stop in play, but it wouldn't keep me from buying the stock. So TSM, I think looks pretty good based on everything I see on this chart on a relative basis, everything moving up left to right coming across the chart here. I think they're gonna have a good report. So we'll see what happens in the morning. Next up is BLK, which is BlackRock. Uh, BlackRock expected to produce earnings of $8.84 beautiful move up here. And you can see this is a stock that's been very strong relative to the asset managers. This one actually has a pretty decent AD line. Uh, again, this is another company I would expect a good report out of. FRC, this is uh, First Republic Bank San Francisco. This is, had been one of the best banks. You can see uh, by, at the end of October, it was at a 52-week high relative to the banks. Now, since we've been moving up and the banks have really taken off recently, here in January especially, we've been going up, but the overall relative strength is down from where it was a couple of months ago. You know, looking at all this, I still think this is a pretty good bank. I think that the numbers are anticipated to be strong. AD line is off the chart to the upside. I would expect good numbers, but this is a company that's run up $30 in the last three weeks, four weeks, heading into earnings. So I wouldn't be surprised of a buy on rumor, sell on news kind of event. I expect good numbers. I just don't know if we'll get a positive reaction to it. We'll see. Delta Airlines would not touch this one. I wouldn't touch any of these airline stocks. I think they got problems. AD line, not bad here. But when you look at airlines relative to the S&P, we had that huge drop back in March through May. 
had a little bit of a rebound in June, but since then we have not even been able to take out that June high. So I think airlines remain under pressure to the downside. Delta, yeah, it's done a little bit better than the overall group, but the group has been weak. Uh, movement to the upside, I mean, I'm not overly impressed with the volume. The one day it did have volume, it closed below the open. I'm just not overall impressed with uh, airlines. So I guess, you know, most, um, most folks following the market are not expecting a lot out of the airline. So if Delta comes up with a little bit of surprise, maybe we get a move up. We'd need to get a breakout though above about 43 and a half. I just don't, I personally, I don't see it happening, but we'll see what happens in the morning. Uh, APHA, this is Afria. Uh, this one has broken out. Volume trends on this stock for the last couple months have been very, very strong. The uh, relative strength relative to the pharmas, incredibly strong. Pharmas have not been a good group but this has been a very good stock within the group. And the heavy volume tells me that this is likely uh, some accumulation taking place, even though the AD line is not supporting that. I believe this is a stock that uh, is going to report some pretty good numbers in the morning. And then the last one I have is this PRGS. This is Progress Software, AD line pretty good. Action recently has been pretty good. Relative strength was at a 52 week low over the summer months into early fall. But we're actually starting to strengthen here versus software. Um, been moving up, trending above that 20-day moving average. So as long as it continues to hold above the 20, I'd be fine with it. I think it looks pretty good. All right, let's move on to the three you must see, and let's wrap this thing up. First stock is going to be Intel. So Intel actually uh, made the announcement that their CEO is stepping down. And what a parting gift. Uh, that, what a vote of confidence for the job you did. Um, you know, you announce your resignation and the stock immediately gaps up about $6. And by the way, AMD went the other way, advanced micro devices. So AMD was thinking, well, we don't want our competitor getting a new CEO. Um, so they sold off. Intel rose, but then you can see did print that black candle off of this recent uptrend. So I'm thinking short term, it's going to be a struggle to get through $60. I think it may wind its way back down somewhere in the mid 50s. And if you like Intel, I think maybe 54, 55, you might be able to get it there. Next up, salesforce.com, CRM. Uh, this is a stock that I actually bought. Um, talked to, or I sent an email out to members yesterday. It was in the daily market report that I send out to members every day. But look at this gap support. Look at the volume, off the chart volume back in August. Um, huge move up from that gap support area we worked our way all the way back down so that gap support was around 216 we tested it so this is an area where you could keep a very tight stop if it goes much below about 215 214 i mean maybe if you want all the way down to 210 give it a little bit of room but the upside would be all the way back to 280 so i think crm looks pretty good last one i want to mention and i think this stock is really starting to turn it back around that is zoom zoom had been a great stock all year been in this three month funk where it's been trending lower, but we did uh, move up. Volume has been picking up. The only bad thing was we had a failure at the 20 day. We had it during the day and couldn't hold it. We need to get that breakout above the 20. I think that would be the confirmation. Anyhow, that is it for me. Want to wish everybody a great trading day, and I'll be back next week at Earnings Beats on Monday for your next Trading Places Live. Happy trading, everybody. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.